Hey guys, Phil Baumhardt here. So for today's video, I wanted to introduce you to the new workshop. So I've uh, moved and uh, got a house with a double lot and uh, ended up building my own uh, shed to be the workshop. This is a uh, yard line kit shed. So it came with all the pieces of uh, pre-cut and all that. I just had to uh, assemble it and listen to the help of uh, some family members and friends. And uh, yonder it lies. So. I uh, bought the yard line Braxton shed. It was a 12 by 24 inch shed. Uh, I mean, my dad put the uh, foundations in, uh, surveyed it, got everything level. It was a uh, post and beam type uh, type foundation. So it's uh, posts sat in the ground with beams running across those posts with uh, gravel in the holes to, to kind of lock everything in. And I uh, went to go get the permits, you know, submitted a application for that. Uh, and the city that I'm in right now they wanted, uh, they wanted concrete foundations, they wanted a concrete floor, rat wall, um, and then also the um, walls of the shed and the rafters and stuff like that uh, that were sent in the kit weren't uh, to the thickness that they wanted. So I would have had to spend a lot of extra money buying new components for the shed. I would have had to tear out the, uh, the foundation that I'd already done. Uh, and this was in the, uh, the winter time that we were doing this. So. I'd have to wait for spring to do the foundations, but I decided to bypass the permit requirement because if the uh, interior square footage is less than is 200 feet or less, uh, a permit is not required. So cut that uh, 24 foot long shed down to 16. So right now, as it stands, it's 12 by 16. Uh, and you can kind of see the uh, kind of a porch area. That's the remaining length of uh, foundation that we still had up. So I still have those beams there. Um, so what I'd probably going to end up doing is building sort of a uh, veranda so it's going to have walls and a roof that will kind of snug up uh, with the existing building. Won't put the doors onto that. Uh, it'll just be kind of a covered porch so you can see with the doors open. Uh, it's got this pegboard. To any, anything I hang on that those doors will get wet. The doors themselves will get wet if I'm trying to work in the rain or snow. So uh, that'll kind of come down in the future. Uh, it's not painted, still have to do that. It's just got the, uh, the primer that came on it from the factory. And in the interior, of course, not 100% uh, uh, done. Still need to get uh, electrical uh, set up in there. Right now, I'm just running extension cords from the house uh, to power it up. But, uh, but right now, it is fully operational. Bought a new anvil, new forge. I've got my Broadback grinder in there. So uh, over the years, if you guys watching this channel, you've seen me grow from a rock anvil uh, and kind of progress from there and slowly uh, build up the tools that I have. So this is kind of a big uh, jump forward with the uh, dedicated uh, workspace, genuine anvil, and a genuine forge. But uh, I've been saving up a long time uh, for this, you know, good eight, five years. I've, I've been wanting to do this, uh, but the first step was finding a piece of property that would facilitate this. While not meticulously planned, I've had all this in the works for quite some time, so hopefully it doesn't come as too much of a shock to you guys who are used to me, uh, you know, <laughs> using a dirt forge. But uh, this is going to be exciting. This is going to be a new chapter in the uh, the Black Heart Forge saga. So I appreciate you guys coming along for the ride so far. So we'll just, uh, get inside and I'll show you uh, what I've got going on in there. All right, so we'll kick off our uh, tour coming in the front uh, carriage doors of the shop. And we'll just start off with the... Uh, the anvil, new anvil, I'm sure that'll be the thing that most people are excited about, or at least I'm most excited about. So uh, what I ended up getting was a uh, Holland anvil. This is a 140 pound London pattern. So we've got the single horn, hardy hole, Pritchett hole. Um, I was kind of debating between this and the 125 pound double horn that they make. Uh, but I went with this because I think that that heel shape will be uh, beneficial to making degars and some of the other stuff that I want to do. But it was, it was definitely a tough call. Since these are made in my home state of Michigan, uh, they have a foundry and a machine shop. I was actually able to pick it up. So talking to Hobie over there, he's a really good guy. And uh, he was, you know, he had both, uh, both the 140 and the 125 uh, out and ready for me. So I was able to look at both of those. He said there wouldn't be much of a performance difference. It was really more of uh, what sort of pattern I wanted to get. So ended up with this one. I have it uh, bolted down right now with the carriage bolt system that uh, Black Bear Forge uses and I also have a layer of caulk underneath 
the uh, base of it, so it's actually fairly quiet right now. So that's a that's a big deal. Um, this in the the way that Holland Anvil does their anvils, the entire thing is uh, hardened. It's H13 steel hardened to uh, 53 to 55 Rockwell, if I remember correctly. Uh, so without the uh, carriage bolt clamps on there, this thing rang like a bell. So I'm happy with it right now. I've got it all leveled out. Uh, I haven't done any forging on, on it yet, so we'll see how it holds up. But uh, these Holland, Holland products just come uh, absolutely pristine. I, I am uh, ecstatic about it. So we can flip around over here. And I have kind of a uh, tool rack set up. I don't have very many tools. Uh, I've just been keeping everything in a craftsman bag. But I got my hammers over there, tongs, and then a uh, twisting wrench. Also made a, uh, I had made up a uh, kind of stirrup for uh, holding work on the anvil with a uh, motorcycle chang. And if we come over here, we have the uh, the other big uh, purchase, uh, actual gas forge. This is a Majestic Forge brand, another American made product. I think they make these in Ohio. So I got the three burner with the opening side door. I have that set right now on a piece of, uh, I believe it's a <laughs> chimney interior piece, so should be fire resistant again, that gets that uh, nice and high for, uh, you know, it, it's a good level for me to get work in and out of there without having to bend over, uh, unlike my old charcoal forge. So for this um, uh, work stand that I can rest my steel on, uh, this is something a friend of mine gave to me years ago, he wanted to make a sword out of it. Uh, and I kind of had to inform him that uh, that probably wouldn't be the best thing <laughs> to make a sword out of, so I held on to it, and now I actually have a use for it. It has a knob so I can adjust the height of it, so that's great. And right now I just have a uh, just have a 40-pound tank. I'd like to get a 60-pound tank because they recommend using a 60-pound tank when you want to have all three burners going. 40-pound will do for two burners. And there you can see the uh, the big old table that I made. This is made out of. Uh, two by sixes and two by eights so real thick uh, heavy duty table got the broad back over there set up uh, so right now my, my current power situation is is uh, I'm just running uh, extension cords to the house I'll figure out getting uh, permanent power run out to this later on but right now we are operational but um, with the amp resist draws I have to just run a separate power cord to the house uh, I do have some shop lights as you can see just got these at Menards. This one's got kind of a rotating uh, dual bank, which is nice. It illuminates this whole table nicely. And then I have another one over here. And then up top, I have the rest of the uh, parts for the shed build up there. And uh, right now I've just, uh, these, this kind of railing was some uh, scrap wood that I acquired. And right now that's just where I got kind of all of my mild steel, high carbon steel stock. Uh, stored up there so it keeps that out of the way and we come over here to this wall have my shields on display with the Blackheart Forge banner made by Bear over at Detroit 925 and I got a few uh, few shelves for storage up on the walls right now I'll probably end up doing more for uh, storage and organization later I don't have any plans right now of doing any sort of uh, finishing on the walls it would be nice to do kind of a um, you know, nice wood paneling, but uh, for the time being, it's operational. I'm gonna just keep it like this. <laughs> I've already put a lot of money into it, so. Over in this corner, we got, uh, this is actually my great-grandfather's tool chest. Uh, he may have made this, but. Uh, oh, down uh, over here, we got the uh, quench stink stored underneath the shelf I built for it. And over here, we have the photo of the ancestors. Bomb hearts were in um, Illinois for a long time. If you look at the top of that building, it says uh, P. Baumhart, horseshoer and wagon maker. So I got those hung up where they can keep an eye on me and I can look to them for inspiration. And so while I was at uh, Holland Anvil, I also ended up picking up a 50 pound swage block. But then we can see the other side, it's got the different uh, patterns for doing spoons and divots and stuff like that. So that was pretty cool. Look at the, get the uh, Got the vise mounted up. Now it's not a big deal to you guys, but for me, I had to drag this thing out from the garage to the forge area every time I wanted to use this thing. So now, uh, for the first time in many years, she finally has a home. All right, well there you guys have it. You're there for the 
first forging on the new anvil. Uh, I got a printer of hole and uh, some 5 8 inch round stock. Fits in there uh, just about perfect. Uh, where I can get it in and out real easy. So I'm going to go ahead and make myself a hold fast for the first project you can do in the new forge. Alright, there you have it. First thing forged in the new shop. It ain't pretty, but uh, it will work. Oops. It's going to hold in as well as it'll uh, do on this uh, beautifully polished holland anvil surface, but I can work that, do chisels, do my uh, um, maker's mark. So, uh, something I always wanted, and now I have it. So, there you go. Alright, well hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, be more Viking.